Hi, it's Dwyer of DwyerCrime.blog. Today is Monday, January the 21st, 2019. This video is intended to be a follow-up on the video I did yesterday concerning the Dirty John series on Bravo that is based on a true story, right? On which, of course, there were a series of LA Times articles and an excellent podcast. Now, briefly, in the series, a woman who has a past, right? She has children. She has been in four marriages. <clears throat> she meets a guy online who she's physically attracted to. She's very successful. The guy is a bit of a mystery. They move in together a few weeks later. She's footing the bills. Right? They get married a few weeks after that. Again, she's footing the bills. He's driving her car. Her kids, who are older, don't like him. They do some investigation. They find out that he's not quite a doctor and that he has a violent criminal history that involves multiple temporary restraining orders that are protecting different women. Right? We later find out he was married before. He has kids of his own that weren't disclosed initially to his girlfriend. Right? Now, my point to you is that the way it's being portrayed is that the lead character, the woman who meets this guy online, is an innocent. That even though she's a successful businesswoman, right, in her 40s or 50s, who has built her own business, who, you know, is um, internet savvy. She meets this guy online. She's checking the home security system using her cell phone, right? Even though she's internet savvy, we'll call her, and successful in her career and has had several relationships in the past, that she's a deer caught in headlights, right? She is completely unsuspecting of this guy's past, of the rough edges that come with this guy. Now, let me just say, episode four, which I've watched since yesterday's YouTube video, to me is downright preposterous. Dare I say, I think it's playing on our gender biases. In the episode, <clears throat> Her kids decide to move on without her, right? Her daughters and son are getting together at the son's place for a family outing and they don't invite her. She shows up at the front door anyway and the son who clearly loves his mom, Right? This family has a lot of love. The kids aren't apathetic toward her. They love her dearly. They just feel she's making big mistakes. Right? Her son looks at her and says, Mom, <clears throat> as long as you are hanging around John, her online boyfriend slash husband, then I can't have you around my family and kids, right? It's a big moment. And of course, the lead character, the mom who's being shunned is devastated. The way it's portrayed is that she's in love with her online boyfriend slash husband. That she's trying to help him get over drug addiction that she's trying to help him clean up mistakes in his official criminal history. She's trying to help him clean up his criminal record. 
and her family is being unsympathetic and a bit too hard. They're not giving her or her boyfriend the benefit of the doubt. Worse yet, she's vulnerable, in need of support, and they're not giving her any support. Right now, that's how it's portrayed. What I want people to do is to consider the idea that this Bravo series is noteworthy because it's playing on our gender biases. If the lead character here were a man and not a woman and had met someone online they were physically attracted to, who they were footing the bills for, right? I believe this would be portrayed differently. For example, let's say that the lead character were the current president of the United States, Donald Trump, right? Older guy, successful in his business, right? Let's say he wasn't married. <clears throat> Let's say after a few failed marriages, he's looking for excitement. He wants a woman who he's physically attracted to. Right? He's really looking for, in the parlance of, let's say, a culture, he's looking for a sugar baby. Right? Let's say he's a sh sugar daddy. Let's say that he then starts dating someone who, let's say, may have made and I'm not referring to anyone in real life, but let's just say he then starts dating an adult film star who may have had a past that involves um, the kind of activity that resulted in a criminal record, right? You meet people who are involved in, let's say, exotic dancing and stuff like that and you might come across folks who have run away from home who might have uh, drug problems at one point who might have debts might not be um, folks with 800 credit scores right so let's say Donald Trump is dating a woman who looks physically attractive but who will just say has a past. And let's say the family understands that Donald is looking for a trophy girlfriend, right? Not necessarily a doctor, just someone who can act like a doctor, right? In other words, with the script flipped, not necessarily a doctor, but a George Clooney type character, a guy who looks like a doctor, who knows some medical terms. Let's say Donald just wants a woman who he can present in public, clean up a bit, present in public while in private. He can live out some fantasies, right? Uh, he's physically attracted to the person he's into that part of the relationship um, you know it's uncomplicated um, you know she makes him laugh and things like that now if the Dirty John show were portrayed that way where the main character has both eyes open isn't deluded into believing every lie of their paramour, but actually has made a decision that at this point in life, I want to be excited. I don't want someone who is socially and societally acceptable. I want someone who can play that role, but who's a little bit edgy, right? 
then the conversation would be different, wouldn't it? The son would be talking to Donald Trump and would basically be saying, look, Dad, your lifestyle, I can't have adult film actresses around my wife and kids in my home. Right? That's not, that's not the kind of behavior that I even want to implicitly support. I don't want my kids to think that way. Right? We know that you've made a conscious decision to pursue arm candy despite the impact it has on the people around you like myself. So since we know this is a dalliance for you, this is nine and a half weeks for you. If you remember that old movie. Right? This is an adventure for you. I can't have you let your adventures spill over into my reality. Now, I believe that's the way it would be dealt with if the lead character is a man. Let's remember... In the Dirty John series, the first date they have, isn't that the relationship that John believes that they have? The end of that first date has John in, we'll call the lead character Connie Britton, the actress, right? Obviously, she's just playing a role. Isn't John lying down in Connie Britton's bed? He has invited himself into the bedroom. At the end of the first date, John is prepared to, we'll just say, go all the way. Make it physical. Right? I believe John sees himself as a boy toy slash man toy. Right? As the end game for his date's fantasy. That first date doesn't look to me like John is trying to have some kind of long-term relationship. Looks to me like John is just interested in the now, the adventure, the fun. So, of course, my point to you, since the lead character, Connie Britton, decides to pay all the bills... Folks, she's footing all the bills. And because John's lies are readily apparent over time, right, I'm surprised in 2019 that this is being portrayed as a deer caught in headlights situation. Understand, she stays with him after $90,000 vanishes that the two of them have put in their safe deposit box. John then has a tall tale of investing the $90,000 with someone. She doesn't follow up to investigate whether that tall tale is correct. Her behavior to me at that point is consistent with someone who understands that they're with someone they're physically attracted to and that they're in a sugar daddy or sugar mama role. Right? The $90,000 is really money that's for him to do things with. Right? And so, let me just state the obvious here. Isn't the narrative of this lead character, the Connie Britton character, completely unbelievable unless you believe it's a sugar mama situation. For example, John has a story about the temporary restraining orders in his past. Right? He claims that a disgruntled ex-wife wanted to gain leverage in child custody and divorce proceedings and so she made up a bunch of stuff. 
put his name on it. Now, let me just say this. We're all adults. I'm over 50. We're all adults here. Right? How would an adult woman believe that story when there are other TROs involving other women? Understand, the detective hired by the daughter actually finds out that their TROs issued in Orange County against him by members of the Irvine Police Department. And so John's explanation, we'll use that word loosely, John's explanation of a disgruntled ex-wife leading to the filing of TROs against him doesn't make any sense whatsoever. No sense whatsoever. Understand, too, with temporary restraining orders, they have a physical description of you in the temporary restraining order. Understand, too, John has a criminal record. He has been in prison in Orange County for charges unrelated to his ex-wife. Now, if the lead character were a man, I believe we would assume that the guy has both eyes wide open and the guy is making an intentional decision to overlook the lies. But here, they're playing on sexual stereotypes, gender stereotypes. So we're presented with the lead character who we're supposed to believe is so head over heels in love with a guy she met online who ended the first date uninvited in her bedroom before leaving in a huff when he didn't get what he wanted. Right? We're to believe that she is so blinded by her love of this guy. Not sexual infatuation. Not, you know, hey, we'll have some fun for a few months and then we'll see where we are. No, no, no. She's all in. She's so blindly in love that when the guy says, you know, my criminal past can be explained by a disgruntled ex-wife, she's actually believing it. In real life, in my opinion, <clears throat> when they hire an attorney to look into and clean up as much as possible his criminal history, right, to me this is no different than an employment situation where you know <clears throat> that someone is um, guilty of sexual harassment because there are too many women who have come out and who have accused this guy of sexual harassment, right? There's too much smoke for there not to be any fire. But yet, because of, let's say, societal protocol, you're going to have an investigation. You're going to take steps where you suspend the person without pay first and then you're going to have an investigation even though you know the evidence of guilt is overwhelming. Right? So, in real life, I believe this woman is hearing tall tales that she knows are tall tales from her gigolo boyfriend slash husband. Right? And she is indulging him because that's the price of keeping the relationship going, she's indulging him by paying for an attorney to, you know, follow up on his tall tales about his criminal past, right? Meanwhile, she is trying to help him beat his drug habit because I believe she hopes to keep this gigolo boyfriend 
as a boy toy slash man toy. Now that's the Richard Dwyer interpretation of these events. Somehow Hollywood is portraying this differently. Where we're supposed to believe that this successful business owner, who's in her 40s or 50s, is so blinded by love that she actually believes there's a chance that this guy's criminal history could be erased from the chalkboard. She believes there's a chance that the lawyer's going to come back and the lawyer's going to say, you know what, these TROs that have descriptions of your gigolo husband, that have his date of birth, that depending on the state have a social security number, uh, all of them are false. Your husband is pure. <laughs> your husband is pure and pristine. <laughs> the man you're in love with, he deserves your love because he's been honest with you. Right? Folks, I'd just like to know here in the comment section why that unbelievable tale isn't gender stereotyping. Right? She's already figured out, and this, this could be easily figured out, that his stories of using drugs for Injuries he suffered in the military, right? He's supposed to have been in Iraq. She's already figured out that his military career is a myth. And so, I'm surprised that this Dear John series on Bravo is viewed by folks, including members of my family, as believable that we're supposed to believe that this woman who is a successful business owner who's been married four times, whose kids, whose kids are savvy enough to be skeptics early on about the background of her gigolo boyfriend, we're supposed to believe that this woman is more naive than her kids that she's just so blinded by love that she can't see that she married a criminal with a drug habit who's been lying about practically everything, right? So forgive me, I'm enjoying the Bravo series, right? But I'm enjoying it the same way I enjoy old films that show the racial biases of the old days or the power imbalances, right? You know, these shows from the 1950s where it's just assumed that a woman's supposed to be wearing an apron in the kitchen and is not supposed to challenge her husband on any subject in front of the kids, right? Shows like Leave it to Beaver and stuff like that. Well, you're getting that here in this Dirty John series. The idea that this woman is supposed to be this naive is simply incredible. I don't believe she was. She meets a guy who thought they were going to have sex on the first date. She's footing all the bills even after $90,000 has vanished. Right? I believe she has both eyes open. They even have a scene where she's in the hospital with him. And the blood work comes back and it's obvious that he's been on opioids. She even knows about his former drug habit. Right? Not from him, but from his blood work. Right, folks? I think we're being blinded ourselves by the fact that the lead character is a woman, not a man, 
and that the gigolo boyfriend is her age, not much younger. If this were a May-December romance, if this were Donald Trump fooling around with some woman in her 20s or 30s, right? If this were an older bachelor fooling around with some woman in her 20s or 30s who that bachelor has met online who is claiming to be a doctor and doesn't even have a nursing license. Right? An older gentleman who stays with his 20-something girlfriend after $90,000 goes missing. An older gentleman who allows his 20-something or 30-something girlfriend to drive his Maserati around town. Then this fact situation would be depicted differently, wouldn't it? Right? I'm mystified that folks don't see this as a sugar mama situation. A woman looking for excitement who meets an exciting guy online, a guy who's good looking, charismatic, fits her fantasy. She decides, okay, I'm just gonna see how long this lasts. She knows it's not gonna last forever. That's why she moves in with him right away. Right? Take advantage of the magic while the magic's happening. Right? She's not running to buy property with the guy. She rents. The guy is a rental. She tries to keep him up, you know, make him presentable, clean him up. So when she's out living her life, charity fundraisers and stuff like that, she can take a good-looking guy with her, right? As I said, she's not interested in having a real doctor with her. She's interested in having George Clooney with her, right? A guy acting like a doctor, a guy who can fit in with her social scene. The kids know it, right? The kids certainly don't treat her as someone who has found the man of her dreams who happens to have a convict past, right? The kids see her as a woman who's with a guy who's a gold digger, who's in it for the money, the social climbing. Folks, this isn't the first relationship I've heard like this. Why is it being portrayed differently? Why is it being portrayed where she's innocent, she's a victim? She meets a guy online who is in her bed at the end of the first date and she's appalled. We'll overlook the fact that she shows up for date number two and date number three. We'll overlook the fact that about a month later, they've moved in together. Right? We'll overlook the fact that his story about his criminal past doesn't even make sense. Doesn't even match the number of women who have filed reports on him. Right? We'll overlook the fact that she hears from a very credible source, people at the hospital, that her gigolo boyfriend has been using opioids. Right? We'll overlook all those facts and the $90,000 that goes missing. We'll overlook all those facts and then portray her as an innocent who's surprised by all of them. In 2019, forgive me if I'm a skeptic on that. I believe the lead character, Connie Britton, is smarter than that much smarter, right? Let's hope Dirty John gets reinterpreted a generation from now where the lead character actually is savvy, is aware, is doing things consciously. 
Anyway, that's how I see it. I'll let you know my thoughts on the closing episodes of the Dirty John series when I get to them. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section of this video. I just am not buying that the lead character is that naive. I think the show would be completely unbelievable if you tried to portray a man this way. Somehow it's believable if you portray a woman this way. I'm not buying it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.